We have a, a lot of work to do in uh, our big cities. There's no question about it. And I am not taking anything for granted. That I, I want to make sure that every single one of our incumbents is able to return into the legislature. More conservatives are realizing that our basic Alberta values, things like compassion, hard work, honesty, integrity, those are not necessarily represented anymore in Danielle Smith's version of the UCP. And welcome back. Countdown to Election Day in Alberta. Advanced polls are already open ahead of Monday's vote. It's been a tight race between the govern governing rather United Conservative Party's Danielle Smith and the NDP's Rachel Notley. What will it all come down to? Let's bring in our Friday strategy session. Joining us from Calgary, Sabrina Grover. She was the the federal, rather, liberal candidate for Calgary Centre in the 2021 election. She's now a principal at Shaki Strategies. And here in studio, Fred Delore is the former director of political operations for Prime Minister Stephen Harper and was the 2021 Conservative National Campaign Manager. He is now a managing partner with Delore Public Affairs. And Anne McGrath is the national director of the NDP and was Rachel Notley's deputy chief of staff when she was in office. Welcome to the three of you. Uh, nice to have you as usually on Friday. And I'm going to start with you. So do you see a path to victory for Rachel Notley? Because, you know, at first, a few few weeks ago, it was it was it was hers. Now it seems that Daniel Smith is is inching ahead. What does she need to do this weekend? Well, I think that there's definitely a path to victory for her, and we heard earlier from uh, Shachi Curl uh, about about the difference between sort of the popular uh, the, like the, the overall numbers and, and then when you drill down into the different seats. Everybody, I think, realizes that this is going to be a ground game. Uh, this comes down to the ground game now. So over the next few days, what has to happen is a very strong get-out-the-vote machine. Um, uh, fortunately, I think that the Alberta NDP has really done a lot of work on, on, uh, on, their, on their field uh, operations uh, over the last few years and is ready to do that work. It comes down to, I, I think people realize that the NDP is very strong in Edmonton, the UCP is strong in the rural uh, and, and smaller cities outside of uh, the two big ones, and it comes down to Calgary, which is not a, not a, a sure thing, I think, for either of them, to be honest. Uh, but there are also some other seats that, that people aren't talking about that much, places like Slave Lake, uh, Banff Kananaskis, Red Deer, Lethbridge, there are other possibilities out there for the NDP to pick up some other seats outside of both Edmonton and Calgary. The ring around Edmonton is another place that I think is sort of up for grabs. But yes, Calgary is really the, the focal point, I think, for, for, both, uh, for both campaigns this weekend. And I think that uh, turnout is going to be key, whether or not uh, the United Conservative uh, uh, folks can, uh, can bring themselves to vote for Danielle Smith. Danielle Smith is is emerging as part of the decision making for a lot of people I think yeah. and there are a lot of conservatives and we've seen it over the last little while who have said this is not this is not my conservative party she is not our leader we see prominent conservatives like Lee Richardson uh, Thomas Lukasik and others saying we can't vote for her we, we, we're not new, we're, we're not NDP but we're voting for Rachel Notley well, well fascinating Sabrina you're in the right place Calgary that's the battleground um, what are you seeing there? I mean, the, the, probably the two leaders will, 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 I'm guessing, I'm just guessing, will be in that area on the weekend. Um, what do you see the ground game as? Because as, as Anne said, and our pollster said earlier, that's what it will come down to, get uh, the people to go to the polls. What are you seeing in I Calgary? Think, yeah, I think since the beginning of the campaign, Joyce, uh, the energy level and the field organization of the NDP has just been stronger out of the gate. Um, I mean, whenever you see NDP campaigns out on the ground, you're looking at 30, 40, sometimes 100 volunteers. Um, we've seen almost every uh, instance of them having rallies with, you know, rooms overflowing, overflowing with capacity. And so we think the energy is really favoring the NDP side. Um, and on the UCP side, the reluctancy uh, that we're seeing in voters, I think, has, has somewhat um, you know, filtered down into the reluctancy of volunteers as well. And so you're seeing a campaign that is uh, maybe stronger on message in terms of the economy and able to deliver that message better, but hasn't really been able to deliver that on the ground. And at the end of the day, it matters how many doors you knock. You know, I, I say this all the time. It doesn't matter what you see on Twitter. 
Um, Twitter is not real life and real voters don't live there. So unless you knock their door and deliver the message to them personally, they're not going to know what you want to when you want to deliver to them. And I think the NDP has been able to do that really well. They've also been really strategic in the writings that they have picked to focus on. And we've seen kind of a, a reallocation even of volunteers towards those writings. So, you know, Anne mentioned a couple, but there's other ones. Uh, Calgary Glenmore uh, is another really dicey one. Um, Calgary Acadia, uh, which I think at the beginning of the campaign 30 days ago, you wouldn't have said at all. That would have been potentially a swing writing, but it's, a, it's coming, um, you know, the way of the NDP. And I think at the end of the day, it's not just whether or not the NDP is going to mobilize their vote and get the right people out, including suburban women. Um, it's also whether or not conservative voters end up staying home and just choosing to opt out of the election. And so it's not that I think the NDP is going to see a huge swing of uh, conservative, uh, you know, previously PC or conservative voters, despite these endorsements you've mentioned uh, or that Anne had mentioned. I, I think it's just that people might stay home. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, uh, Fred, I want to ask you about this Pierre Poilievre endorsing uh, Danielle Smith yesterday, uh, saying, you know, a vote for Rachel Notley is a vote for, for Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh. Um, how is that playing? You know, how, is, is, is that a thing? Is that, is that going to help her? It certainly is. If people are looking at the ballot, uh, if, if Trudeau and Singh are on the ballot, then this race is definitely over there uh, in Danielle Smith's favor. Because uh, the Conservatives, you know, federally, they dominate this. This is the heartland. This is our, our federal heartland. Uh, Mr. Poliev is very popular there as well. Um, same time, this is his strongest provincial ally, Danielle Smith. So it makes sense for him to go out and support her. Um, but yeah, this is a, this is, there's no question that I mean, that he waited Trudeau, three days before the vote to do that. This is the time to do it. This, this last weekend is when, you know, there's 20% undecided, we heard earlier yes. today. This is the time to move that vote. And when people realize, wait a second, right, do you want a Trudeau ally or a Polyev ally as premier? And if that's what they're going to be voting for, then this definitely helps Danielle Smith. Well, we have, and two, uh, already many more, but two conservative-leaning premiers who play nice with Ottawa. Uh, we heard Mr. Lugo before. We know the Premier of Ontario, there, you know, they've got great deals together. Does that, how does that play in Alberta if Rachel Notley seems to be the candidate or the leader or the, the next Premier that can play nice with Ottawa? Do, would they rather have someone who fights Ottawa or someone who makes deals with Ottawa? I think it's hard to make the case that uh, Rachel Notley plays nice with Ottawa. Um, anyone who's worked with her knows that she's a tough negotiator uh, and she has been tough on the federal well, government. Than, than, than Smith. Probably. Well, I mean, she, she, she knows how to do the job. I mean, she's been the Premier before. Uh, Danielle Smith has got nothing for her kind of abrasive, uh, uh, adversarial, pit bull kind of approach. So so I think that the, the question is for, for I, I think Doug Ford has learned, Francois Legault has learned, and some others have learned, that you do need to actually be able to talk to your counterparts, even if they're from another party. And uh, Danielle Smith doesn't seem to have learned that. And I think that she's, you know, I think that for that, she has very little relationship with uh, the federal government and has not been able to get anything. When Rachel Notley was in government, she was tough, but she was able to get some uh, some things out of the federal government. I think that you'll probably see a very similar style next time. No one can say that she is she is not a she's not with Trudeau. She's not with Singh. She's not with Polyev. She is going to be a premier for Alberta. Albertans are first in her heart and first in her thoughts. So um, you know, Sabrina, you're there. You're on the ground. What are you What are you watching this weekend? What 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 are you looking at specifically? Yeah. You know, I think um, it'll be interesting to see in the last weekend going in uh, how the parties or how Rachel Notley and Danielle Smith frame, um, continue to frame the ballot box question into Monday. I do think uh, the voter turnout for advanced vote has been phenomenal. It smashed records uh, for 2019. I think in the first day we saw 150,000 people vote and then same thing since, uh, since Tuesday. So that high voter turnout really does favor the NDP. And so it'll be interesting to see in the last couple of days how they push the rest of their message, right? Do they lay a little bit off of the negativity, which I think has been pretty dominant of their um, campaign, in, rightfully so. I think there's a lot to, uh, to talk about on the Danielle Smith side, specifically with Danielle Smith herself. Um, and then, you know, how do they frame that question about trust with the economy? 
And I think that that's really what it's going to come down to. I think they've really hammered home the, the message that they have on health care and on education. I think if you're a health care education voter, there's no way you're voting UCP. You know that uh, the NDP are the ones that are going to deliver on that. But if you're an uh, yeah. economy voter, you know, how does Danielle Smith handle your CPT? Um, when does she bring back the Sovereignty Act uh, and risk the economic integrity of Alberta, which she did, um, you know, when she first came in as leader? And I think those are some of those questions that you might see come up at the door. And I think that's what I'm going to be interested in seeing how the NDP plays that. And at the end of the day, I think the NDP in the last couple of days needs to rise above the fray and uh, kind of, you know, pulling back from the, the 2015 hope and hard work campaign. Um, you know, what is the positive vision that they're going to bring forward and what's Rachel Motley really yeah. going to do for you?